Good afternoon, all the event attendees. Um, this is my uh, presentation for today, and uh, my research topic is about accessing ecotourism using pro poor tourism principle, the case of Mandukuri Province Protected Forest, uh, Cambodia. And my supervisor is Dr. Hamish Bramner. He's also at event with us as well. And um, uh, so this is the outline that I'm going to present today. So I'll start with um, introducing the um, background information, and I will uh, finish with the explanation of my methodology for the study. So um, firstly, I will start by introducing uh, where is Mandukuri province and um, where is um, Mandukuri protected forest. So um, basically, um, Mandukuri protected forest has um, located in the Mandukuri province, and it is one of the five uh, biggest protected forests in Cambodia, which located in the eastern plain landscapes um, um, area. And also, um, it has been prioritized as the core zone for ecotourism development by the Royal Government of Cambodia as well in 2013. So this is the map of um, Mandokuri Protected Forest. Basically, um, um, this area has been divided into four zones. The first zone is core zone, which is highlighted in green. Um, the uh, second one is the um, regulated use zone, and the third one is community use zone, and the last one is ecotourism zone. As you can see in the map, um, ecotourism happened in and around um, the three community cluster. One is the Northern Swap, Western Swap, and the Southern Swap, and um, it is located along the uh, Stripo River as well. So that's where tourism happened within this protected area. So you might uh, question me that um, why I choose proper tourism research. So um, I've got four basic reasons uh, for this uh, selection, for this choice for the topic. So the first one is um, a majority of the uh, proper tourism research has focused on African country. So um, in 2014, he said that uh, although most of the researcher and also I mean, the researcher are, uh, let's say, Westerner and also people from Southeast Asia, but uh, most of the research related to proper tourism is focused on the of African country only. And the second reason is um, the theoretical um, and methodological development of the proper tourism approach has not accessed systematically. Um, what they are trying to say is that previous research has acknowledged the importance of using um, theoretical and methodological uh, uh, methodological development in their study, but none of them have accessed it uh, systematically. So this is one of the reasons that I choose this study. And the third reason is pro tourism research has not reached its academic saturation because there's been lacks of uh, understanding about uh, poverty and its relation and its relationship to tourism. So that's why the um, in terms of the um, capacity and contribution from the research into the field of pro tourism has not been like has not, is, let's say, is not enough right now. And uh, the last reason is um, most of the research trying to answer either, um, I mean, how can tourism contribute to the uh, development of the local community rather than answer is it tourism, uh, is tourism can be uh, like uh, an appropriate tool for the poverty reduction. So, so they're, they're, they are the uh, four basic reasons that uh, motivate me and encourage me to choose the area for the study. <clears throat> so this is the aim and objective of my study. So um, the uh, biggest aim of my study is to access tourism development in Mandokuri Protected Forest by using pro poor tourism principle. And in order to reach um, this aim of the study, I'll be um, employing um, three basic uh, objectives. The first one is to really understand the tourism development in this area. The second one is to analyze the current form of tourism in that area by using the particular principle of proper tourism. And the last one is to explore the um, alternative model that encourages stakeholder collaboration and poverty reduction. So um, fundamentally, there are two uh, research questions in my study. The first one is what aspect of proper tourism are evident in tourism development in Madokuri protected forest? And the second one is um, are there any alternative model for tourism development that encourage stakeholder um, collaboration and um, poverty reduction at the same time. So in order to uh, answer all of the questions, um, I have to review some key literature, and here I will um, present only the key literature uh, from uh, my proposal. So um, 
basically, um, ecotourism is one of the concepts that uh, is officially and universally recognized as the tool for sustainable tourism development. And also, if you uh, use it in, in a proper way, it can also lead to green industry as well. But there's been a lot of debate and myths about ecotourism because um, many authors, many authors has uh, really uh, questioned him, themselves that um, because of the misunderstanding, because of the misusing of ecotourism. Let me give you an example. Um, for some tourism destination, they just let's say label themselves of an ecotourism destination, but in reality, it is just a marketing tactic to attract the attention of the to of the tourists into the area. So this is how it happened in reality. And the th um, second one is that um, although uh, ecotourism has its own um, universal principle, but um, there has been lack of appropriate framework to guide the basic principle uh, in the real implementation. So what is proper tourism? Um, I've given two options here by, um, uh, and this definition has been viewed by various also around the world. Um, there's been question that either proper tourism is a product or an attraction or it is an approach. So the answer is it is not a product or um, um, attraction, it is an approach, but rather it is a, an approach to the development and management of tourism. So, um, so um, what is the purpose of developing proper tourism? So um, there are three main purposes of developing proper tourism. The first one is seeking to secure the benefit for local community, which, uh, which I mean by the poor. And the second one is to unlock the opportunity for the poor rather than expanding the overall size of the tourism development. And the third one is establish a linkage between tourism and poverty alleviation and, uh, and trying to ensure that voice and needs of local, uh, of local people are heard and um, are taken into account or taken into consideration. So um, after having an understanding about what is proper tourism, um, this is the basic key principle that I will use to analyze the uh, ecotourism in, in um, locally protected forests. So uh, um, really, um, this principle are adapted from Ashley, uh, DFI, and Roe, and Zout. Um, the first principle is going to participation. So what I mean by participation here? Participation, um, um, here we refer to the, uh, we emphasize on the uh, participation from the local community. So uh, we measure by two things. The first one is public participation, which uh, through the commune, uh, under the picture of community member. The second one is tourism uh, related economic participation, just like employment factor, uh, formal or informal wage. And the second principle is empowerment. So um, empowerment, we refer to the local capacity to influence the, um, any um, development related decisions uh, that matter in, at the ground level. And the third principle is a holistic livelihood approach and opportunity. Um, here we're trying to, uh, because as guided by Ashley, uh, she, with her college, uh, she explained that tourism should not earn a substitute um, livelihood activity to other core activity, but rather it should be an alternative option to really support with other um, livelihood activity. And um, the fourth one is <coughs> distribution. Uh, distribution here, we're trying to focus on the uh, cost and benefit analysis. So in order to do that, we focus on the role of local community and the role of um, other key intermediary functions significantly at the ground level. And um, another one is commercial realism because um, this is ex really um, this is really critical for the local community because as explained by the UN and the WTO in 2002, um, they said that um, commercial commercial vi commercial viability is paramount and because um, the poor do not have sufficient resource to really in risk engaging in the tourism any tourism uh, project that do not have the significant linkage between tourism and poverty alleviation. So they are not going to do that. So uh, making sure that the com commercial realism, I mean commercial viability is uh, really important for the um, tourism development. <coughs> and um, another one is cross-disciplinary learning. So um, it is not about making profit, it is not about generating money, but at the same time, local community have to be able to learn the skill, not only the hospitality and tourism related skill, but also the other skill like um, family and entrepreneur um, that they can um, like operate it by themselves. And the last principle is flexibility. This goes to 
this concern at the management and uh, core. Uh, I mean the management plan. So uh, we have like national plan. We have um, plan for the the whole province. But what I'm trying to explore is that there are any um, specific plan that trying to address. I mean that fit the uh, the context of the Mandokari protected for uh, Mandokari protected forest at, at, at this uh, um, current situation. <clears throat> So um, when proper tourism occur, um, I'm not going to detail uh, all of this timeline, but um, the purpose of showing you uh, when it is uh, occur is trying to draw your attention to focus on um, the, um, changing, the changing focus of development uh, of uh, proper tourism development. So uh, really in 1985, it has been stated tourism is used as a tool for poverty alleviation at the ground level. But, um, Significantly, in 2006, Propo Tourism, uh, Propo Tourism Partnership and, DF and DFI and also the UNWTO have acknowledged that they fail. They fail because um, they do not create the uh, larger impact or significant impact at the ground level. Because of what? Because of there's been a mistake of, uh, I mean, the failure of trying to engage with the mainstream industry or trying to engage with the private sector. So uh, without the linkage between local community and private sector, tourism does not create significant impact. So that's what they acknowledge. So in the next 10 years, um, they, they put more fun in trying to um, um, explore the intervention that can achieve sustainable long-term poverty re uh, reduction linkage with the mainstream industry. So that is the direction of development of this concept. <clears throat> um, if you remember, if you rem if you refer back to my um, reason, second reason that I uh, why I choose this study is that because um, none of the previous study has um, stated specifically or explained um, um, holistically what uh, theoretical framework or uh, methodological framework that they have employed in their study. So that's uh, that's that's the reason why I choose this framework to guide and. Um, this is an integrated. Is this an integrated research framework from um, introduced by uh, Zaus and Ritchie in 2007? So uh, my research focuses on the two layer in the middle. Or uh, it is determinant and APT. APT is anti-poverty tourism theme. So if you refer back to um, to the principle that I have listed here, I have. Uh, so this principle have guided by the uh, integrated framework that I just show you at the moment. So destination competitiveness and destination sustainability will go to commercial realism, in which I mean by commercial viability. Local participation, of course, is one of the principle. Empowerment, of course, is one of the principle. Opportunity has been integrated into holistic um, livelihood um, approach, and security has been integrated into that uh, principle as well. So. Um, uh, here comes to the uh, methodology of my study. So this study is um, uh, basically guided by um, the in descriptive interpretive research methodology. So in this study, uh, what I'm trying to do is that I try to get the rich information, the rich description from my informant and interpret it in a deeper way by reflecting with the literature review. So that's what I'm doing. So. Um, uh, in order to reach my participant, I will use one type of sampling, which is purposive sampling. Um, I mean, that means that I will uh, approach my participant with specific purpose, unless they have worked in the um, tourism development field for more than one year, so that they, they can tell and uh, the experience of uh, development uh, to me in a proper way. And uh, the third one is data collection. So um, there are two types of data collection. The first one is secondary data collection, in which I will uh, be co I will be collecting uh, some document from the national level related to ecotourism development policy, and also the um, strategic uh, strategic plan for Madukri province uh, that has been implemented currently, and also the uh, environmental management plan that has been implemented in the Madukri protected forest. So um, the primary data collection will be uh, using will be employed by using uh, in-depth interviews. So um, by reflecting these two types of data collection, I will be using uh, two, two types of data collection, uh, the two types of data analysis. The first one is documentary data analysis. 
So this tool will be using to will be used to analyze the that all the data in which I call the, uh, I gather from the uh, secondary data collection and um, the framework analysis will be used to um, analyze all the data in which I collect from the um, primary data collection uh, in-depth interview. So here uh, is the list of references that I have used for my study. <coughs> Thank you so much for your great attention and participation. Yes, please. <coughs> Sorry, <laughs> this one. So there are three zones that have been used as ecotourism destination. And <coughs> who is the, I mean, who is the initiator about using these three zones to be the ecotourism site? And I suppose the initiator might have mentioned that, for example, if it is some mm -hmm. conservation organization or from other sources, they might have agenda, specific agenda, rather than the pro tourism which So um, the ecotourism initiative that has been implemented in this area is, um, I mean, the management structure is starting from the Ministry of Environment. And then uh, if you refer back to the uh, provincial level, there's been a very clear structure of the, in, in terms of management of the site. So they have um, provincial department, uh, uh, provincial hall, so they have department of environment for uh, forestry administration and also um, they create one pr initiative with sa inside this uh, protected area, which is called um, Sripo Wilderness, Sripo Wilderness uh, Sanctuary. Uh, and this initiative is um, created um, by the uh, collaboration, is created by the collaboration among the government, offic official government, and also the uh, one uh, non-organization, non non-profit organization, which is WWF has been, uh, they are planning to implement it another plan within this area. So there's been clear uh, uh, management structure inside this area and also the authority as well. So it is led by the government agency? Yes. So uh, ecotourism is one of the objective that uh, they are planning to do. But right now they have the uh, ecotourism existed in that area uh, already, but they just have one new initiative which is just I told you at the moment, Stripe uh, initiative, so that they have used to really um, making this site as the model as for other uh, ecotourism site in Cambodia. So this this is going to be a model for other sites. Yes, thank you for your question. You mean the result of my, of my study? Yeah, how do you think that will be used? How my result will be used, right? Yes. Okay, uh, thank you for your question. Um, I think um, after, having up, um, after obtaining the finding from my study, first thing, I'll go back to my, I'll send all the summaries of my, my study to my key participant, of course, because they contribute the, their time, they contribute their knowledge and experience in my study. So uh, I've got uh, the motivation and encouragement from one of the staff from the WWF to share this document with the Department of Tourism in Madhogri province, basically. So um, what I'm trying to do is that I will uh, translate the key summary of finding into Khmer language so that they can read and get the idea of what I'm, what's going on and what uh, it's going to do next. And also I'm going to share with the student at university as well. Yes, thank you for your question. Thank you. I believe that we have done six of the literature reading so far. And my question is, would you recommend any other further research in this area that mm. you see is the drawback in ecotourism? Mm. Um, thank you for your question. Um, there's been suggested a lot of, um, I mean, the opportunity for other st study Center. I'd like to present a small token of yes. our appreciation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.